Tansega kio no ago maganak. Kaya tuko gisi ko nitsi ko asun ne heo ni anits ko po ne hoce. I am very pleased to announce that my ceremonial name is Fine Day, given to me by the late Joe P. Cardinal, my mentor and elder. And I'm Cree from Sad Lake First Nations. So today, I'm very happy to be honored with you today to talk about a little bit about residential school history, but also as a survivor, to start out this off in a good way by doing a cleansing ceremony and as I have medicines in front of me. So bear with me. We use everything as natural as possible, wooden matches from the tree and uh, the sacred fire as we know it, the flame. It offers us a time to have vision as we burn the medicine to share and to care our sacred fire with one another in the way that we have been shown as love. And so this is how we model our life every day by acknowledging our Creator, Mamu Tawimau, Father of all. We know Him by many names, but in this way, I like to start every day of my life by the ceremony or any time that I, I share information so that I could start off in a good way. So this is how I go through this procedure, by acknowledging this gift of life that we take for granted and the movement as we walk in the circle of life. And so we always acknowledge our spirit. We acknowledge our physical and how important that is to be healthy. We acknowledge our mind and the learning that we have in paying attention and listening. We acknowledge our emotion and our heart because we have this sacred gift that we can share with our fellow man or human beings. So for you as youth, adults or old people, when we share this as human beings, small acts of kindness in life come back in a big way. So with that, any kind of ceremonial items that we use, in this way the eagle feather, which is, comes from the eagle, the messenger to the creator. And we acknowledge these four directions, the east and the south, the west and the north. And when we share this amongst all of you here today. Virtually, we put our faith in it and our belief to purify and cleanse what we have to share because new learnings in life, as I said, because the Creator gave us this mindset, it becomes ceremony because it's part of our physical. So when we do this every day, it grounds us and we can walk to start uh, another day of life. And so we believe in those elements of the sacred fire, the sun, Mother Earth and all that she provides in life. The water which gives us shelter, strength, nourishment. All these things are related. And water is a medicine because we use it every day to wash ourselves and to clean ourselves. And so this water also in our history in residential school flows from your eyes when you're grieving like a river. But it's, it's a medicine because it helps you to release the pain, spiritual pain, physical pain, emotional pain, all those things, mental pain, and we acknowledge, last but not least, the first gift of the Creator, the sacred wind spirit. We know it as oxygen. And when we walk this life, we use that every day without thinking, as long as we breathe, until we finish our journey. It could be in those four stages of life. As a baby, teenager, adult, or old person like myself. So I'm known otherwise as... Dr. and Elder Francis Whiskajack, and I work at the Universities of Alberta, Grand McEwen, 
Concordia, and I've worked with the public school for school board for over 17 years, doing what my elder taught me, mentoring and advocating for kids. So today, I am a residential school survivor, and I have a lot of stories that I witnessed as a, as a child, from trauma, a tragic history, and how residential school affected me. It's, I have many memories of those things that we talk about, of pain, but really today, I am happy where I am because as experiencing trauma and the search for healing, led to my belief in ceremony and walk, walking a spiritual path, which plays a very important role. My mentor set certain statements in life. One statement could mean so much. One of the things he always taught me was, if you're weak in this life, you will never survive. But if you are strong, you will survive. See, and that really is the gist of what I share with you today because I've made so much change in my life. And I think that keeps me strong because I acknowledge that spirit that was lost. I acknowledge the physical, the physical strength to overcome addictions that I lead a life of sobriety, free of alcohol, free of smoke and free of drugs. And so that really grounds me. That takes care of my body. To acknowledge the mind because of how I choose my life path and how I treat people. And in the creativeness that we have as Native people, the ability to make drums, rattles, to be able to draw. And that comes with the gift of movement. And to prepare to use these life skills in what I create to beat the gift of vision, the gift of gentleness. I worked as an order nursing orderly in the past and also in the ambulance business. And to use gentleness, kindness to help people. And the gift of song with the drum and the rattles and the guitar to move the spirit of our grandfathers, grandmothers, and other people that are grieving. So all these gifts come in a very big way. And to acknowledge that emotion the ability to laugh, and the ability to cry. And th there's no shame in that. And when I get this balance in life, and I can connect to the Mother Earth, to the universe, to people, to the animal life, the trees, the plant life, it gives me that harmony that I need to get a fix. In other words, treatment, as they say, to rehab myself. And Everything starts with self and life, you know, because I make that choice and I want to help myself. And so and when I experienced a lot of pain in residential school and how I was treated, mistreatment, and I learned not to trust people, especially people with uniform, uh, because the nuns that uh, looked after us uh, wore habits and the priests wore those cassocks they call they call them they were dressed in black but anyway the, you know this kind of things the bad memories i had to do something because i uh, i knew so many things happened when i was going to residential school and i was taken away from my parents they lost the value of parenting and i think they had their own abandonment issues you hear many stories of residential school survivors i'm one of the lucky ones because I'm still alive today at 73 years old, and I'm healthy. And this is what life is about, to remember all those things. But it wasn't always easy. You know, it, it took a lot of risk. And in, uh, I always remember uh, growing up and, you know, we were conditioned. They called them residential schools. But were they really residential? We were like in institutions, like in jails, because we didn't really have a choice. We had to follow, to do, we didn't have a choice to do what we wanted to do, really. We had to follow rigid rules, like they are in the army, say, and, and to 
obey what the nuns and priests told us. If we disagreed, we were punished for any anything. We didn't uh, think of healthy sexuality because even when we looked at the girls' sides uh, to look at our own sisters, it was considered a sin or that you were stepping over the boundary, pastahuin. So uh, I was so lucky at three and four years old to have a free spirit, to be moving in with my grandparents. That's a good memory. And to be immersed in the language that I still use today. And the importance of this language tells me who I am, my identity. I am proud to be First Nations. Because that language is so sacred in Cree, because it connects to the natural universal world. It connects to the earth. And all our terms are very sacred because they have root words that connect to everything in life and, and what we do and how we describe things in ceremony. So I, I just wanted to mention that. Like, I'll give you an example. When we say tanse, it's a greeting word. And kitsi uh, sun. Kitsi means your belly button or umbilicus, and it connects you to who did you co- who brought you into the world? Who were you connected to? See, your mother, grandmother, clan mother. So that's your history. And the sacredness of women, those were the first teachings that were given to us before the interruption or colonialism. So I have learned this through years, and I'm still learning every day. And when we say Mio Kisikao, for instance, Mio is our body, something beautiful and good. And it gives us that training of something beautiful. So when we say Mio Kisikao, it's saying expressing a beautiful day. And Kisikao comes to the root word Kisiko, which means heaven, creation, or universe. So this beautiful day is part of us, it's part of creation. So I I just wanted to share some of those things of how going back to our lifestyle, our identity, uh, overcoming obstacles, overcoming problems can be done through ceremony and healing. Because I tell you, some of the stories that we have today and why Orange Shirt Day is so important is to make positive change in life. It still affects our people today, our history. But a lot of people didn't believe it happened. And so this is why I share this today. It did happen and that we cannot forget our past, but we can certainly make change.